Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday morning service by, from our remote location. Thank you for joining us today. We're here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Sure My Road, Houston, Texas. Again, thank you for joining us to our visitors, our friend. Thank you for being a part of our service. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy, your grace. God, we honor you today. We bless your name. We, we thank you, Father God, for just being good and being God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for giving us another chance to study your word, to look into your word, to be blessed by your word. Lord, we ask you to bless us now, Father God, as we come to this moment of worship. We ask you to forgive us for our sin. Don't let anything hinder us, Father God, from contacting you and you contacting us. Lord, we say hallowed to your name. You have watched over us. You've kept us. You blessed us again, given us another chance. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. We say glory, hallelujah to you. For you are the great God. You're the great King. You're the one who keeps us and bless us. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless your word, Father God, that your word will fall on good soil, that your word, Lord, Father God, will be a blessing to many. And the, that we, the people of God, will run and tell men, women, boys, and girls about the goodness of Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. We're looking today at Psalm number 95. Psalm number 95 in the Old Testament. We're looking at Psalm number 95. We're looking where the psalmist is telling us to bless the Lord and praise him. We're looking at Psalm 95. And when we get there, we will find these words. It's a call to worship and a call to obedience. The psalmist is calling us to worship and he's calling us to obedience. So today I will read in your hearing Psalm 95 verses 1 through 5. Psalm 95 verses 1 through 5. When you found it, you will discover these words. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his name or in his hand are the depths of the place of the earth. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. In the, the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, and for he has made it. His hands form the ground round. I want to talk about let us worship God. Let us worship God. God, let us worship God. Situations have given us raw deals. It looks as if we can't get a break. That may be you this morning. You've gotten to a point in your life where you feel like every time one thing is done, every, th every time one crisis is finished, you just can't get a break. <laughs> you get to a point in your life where you realize that if it ain't one thing, it is another. The solution today from the psalmist in Psalm 95, the solution is that we come and worship the Lord. In the midst of our conditions, whether those conditions are good and bad, whether those conditions are good or bad, whether those condition, conditions are mixed with good and bad, let us come and worship the almighty God. When we look at the text, we look at the text, the psalmist is calling us to worship. The psalmist is calling us to obedience. The psalmist is telling us in verse number one, Oh, come and sing to the Lord. The psalmist declares that we must come and sing to the Lord. And he gives us three things, and I'll point those three things out and I'll leave you alone. The psalmist says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. 
In good times, we ought to sing. In bad times, we ought to sing. In so, not so well times, we ought to sing. The psalmist gives us one command, one command on, only in verse number one. He says, oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. He says three things to do. First of all, he says, sing unto the Lord. And when he says, sing unto the Lord, he gives us three reasons why we sing. Number one, he says, sing unto the Lord because of God's security. Number two, he says, sing unto the Lord because of God's superiority. And number three, he says, sing unto the Lord because of God's sovereignty. The psalmist is clear. The psalmist is clear in verses one through five that we ought to get to a point in our lives where we are willing to sing unto the Lord. And it doesn't matter the conditions. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. It doesn't matter what things look like. We walk by faith, not by sight. And therefore, we must sing unto the Lord regardless of the conditions. This word sing, this word sing, this word sings means to ring out a cry and to ring out that cry aloud. He, he says, he says, oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord and we must sing unto the Lord out loud. So we cannot hide behind our personalities. We cannot hide behind the fact that we are introverts or ext extroverts. He says, come and sing. He says, everybody ought to sing unto the Lord. It's a sad day. It's a sad day when we show up at church and the choir is singing and everybody else is looking. It's a sad day when we come before the Lord in his presence. We come before the Lord in his building. We come before the Lord in our walk with God in the choir, in the praise team are the only groups that are singing. He says, sing the word, sing, ring out a cry. The word sing means to, 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 to sing with a, a mighty cry unto the Lord. When you look at verse number two, it tells us I'm just talking about security. I'm just talking about how to 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 sing. I'm just talking about singing unto the Lord. I told you earlier, there are three reasons why we ought to sing unto the Lord. First of all, we would we should sing unto the Lord because of the Lord's security. We ought to sing unto the Lord. Number two, because of God's superiority. And we ought to sing unto the Lord, number three, because of God's sovereignty. These are the reasons we ought to sing unto the Lord. It's not because he's blessed us and we can see our blessings. Because he has blessed us with intangible things that we can't see. He blessed us with breath. He's blessed us with a heartbeat. He's blessed us with blood flowing to every extremity of our bodies. He's blessed us to be on top of the ground one more time. And the ground's not on top of us. We are to sing unto the Lord. And it ought not be quiet. Jesus says, if, if these be quiet, if these don't praise me, if these shut up, then the rocks will cry out. There ought not be any rocks crying out in your place. So he says, sing. Verse number one, he says, sing. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. This, this self-existing God, this, this Theos God, this uh, God that, that is the champion for Israel is also the champion for us. We ought to sing unto the Lord. Has nothing to do with your voice. It has nothing to do whether you can hold a tune or not. It has nothing to do whether you're equipped in music or not. He says sing. He didn't ask you if you could hold a note. He didn't ask you if you can follow the music. He didn't ask you if you can follow the director. We ought to praise him, honor him, sing unto him regardless of what conditions we're in. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Then he gives us those three reasons. First of all, he talks about security in verses one and two. He says, sing unto the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully to him with songs. 
God has secured us. What is that, preacher? It says right there, rock. He's the rock of our salvation. He says we are to shout joyfully. This word shouting, this word joyfully shouting simply means that we ought to have a blast of a shout. We ought to raise our voices when we shout. We ought not just depend on others to raise their voices. We have to raise our voices. This word shout joyfully, this phrase shout joyfully means you ought to blast it out. Blast it and ring it out. Ring out a shout of joy. You ought to do it with joy. You ought to get, get excited about it. And, and some people have gotten to a point where the houses have been taken. The psalmist says, sing unto the Lord. Some people have gotten to the point where their cars have been repossessed. The psalmist declares, you ought to bless out of singing, bless out joyfully a shout unto the Lord. Some people have gotten to the point where they've lost children or can't have children. The psalmist declares to us this morning that we ought to show a shout of praise unto the Lord and we ought to do it regardless of what we're going through. Don't, don't let your circumstances hinder your shout. Don't let your conditions hinder what you're going through. Don't let situations sit in and take control of you. And even when you're caught or uh, mixed up in the midst of sin, don't let sin abandon you and bind you away from God. Confess your sins. Confess your sins and God is faithful and God is just to cleanse you. God is just to forgive you. God is just to make you over again. God is just to reconform you over again. Just confess your sin. If anybody in here today that has come to a point in their lives where sin is having its way in your life. The Bible teaches that we ought to confess our sins one to the other. And it says that we ought to confess our sins unto God. And as we confess our sins unto God, God is faithful and God is just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So don't let your sins Stop you from shouting unto the Lord. Don't let your, the things you're going through stop you from shouting unto the Lord. He says in verse number one, we are to shout unto the Lord who is the rock of our salvation. This word rock, this word rocks means a stone. This word rock represents a boulder. This word rock represents a solid foundation. This word rock represents strength. He says, let us shout. The first reason he says, praise the Lord, is for security. Under security, he says, we ought to shout unto the rock of our salvation. He's our rock of our salvation. This rock is our strength. This rock is our boulder. This rock is our foundation. This rock is our stone. We ought to shout unto the Lord, who is the rock of our salvation. Word salvation. Means he's our rescue. <laughs> this word salvation means he is our safety. The word salvation means that he is our welfare. The word salvation means that he has delivered us from our crises. <laughs> Let me tell you, if you've ever been messed up, if you've ever been in a crisis, <laughs> and you ever need anybody to pull you out, I want to warn you now, you can't depend on church folk. I want to warn you now, you can't depend on family. I want to warn you now, you can't depend on friends. You need to, the rescuer himself, the rock of your salvation. He will rescue you from your challenges. This word salvation is not a word that means to save us, save us from our sins. It doesn't mean to save our souls, but it means to save us from our challenges. Save us from what we're going through. Save us of, of the things that we are, we're wrestling with. Somebody this morning is wrestling with something and you want the Lord to save you from it. I, I raised my hand today. I raised both hands up. I raised all five toes on that foot and all five toes on the other one. Let me tell you, I need God. I need him to rescue me. I need him to save me. I need him to deliver me. I need God to give me safety and welfare. Do you need him? Have you tried him? If you've tried him, won't he do it? He's done it over and over again. I need God to be my security. 
Let me just share with you today. AT, ADT brings protect one are good to have, but they are not your security because the, the thieves we got now, <laughs> they are smarter than those who have gone to school for it. <laughs> the thieves that are on the block now, they, they can take stuff. These are smart people. These, these are people who can do things that even the makers cannot do. Let me share with you, if you need somebody, if you need somebody to rescue you, somebody to be the rock of your salvation, you need God himself. He is the rock of our Salvation. So the first thing he says in, in verse number one and verse number two, he, he says to us, oh, come, let us sing. Come, let us sing to the Lord. He says sing unto the Lord. He, he doesn't say sing unto other folk. Too many times we are singing the praises of the wrong people. We're singing the praises of people who have given us something. We're singing the praises of people who have been good to us. We're singing the praises of people who has, has helped us out when we needed help. But in the midst of it, you need to sing praises unto the Lord. Uh, th just the other day, a, a millionaire, a multimillionaire went to a school. And when he went to the school, it's a, it was a preparatory school for college. When he went to the school, he knew that these children were the underserved. These children were the marginalized. And even though they went to college preparatory school, they would never be able to afford school. And therefore, they would walk out of school with a lot of bills, a lot of school bills, a lot of bills that they had to pay. And so they put their, they're that far more behind because they cannot afford school. And then they have to get school loans and then they have to pay off the school loans. So they're that far behind another five years before they can recoup and go on equal footing with those who have money. So this one millionaire, this one multi-millionaire, shows up and he calls an assembly. When he calls the assembly, the principal knows why he's there. But the students have no idea why they're in this assembly. So this multi-millionaire gets up and he announces to the school, he announces to the students, if you were a part of this school at this time, a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, or a senior, all of your bills, all of your tuition, all of your meals in college will be paid. They interviewed one boy. He said, he said I, I do appreciate this mister for coming by here, but I just want to let you know that God is going to get some of my special attention tonight. See, this young man understood very well. He understood very well that the fact of the matter is the multimillionaire was the one that God used in order to get his tuition with him. And he knew who to call on. He knew who to sing to. He knew who to praise because he understood that it is almighty God who gave him this welfare, who gave him this security. In verses one and two, he's a rock. He's, he is the rock of our salvation. And it says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. This young man that night went before his presence with thanksgiving. You have to go before his presence with thanksgiving in a matter uh, in a matter that you want to be thankful unto him and bless his name. You want to go to his presence with thanksgiving because God is the one who moves the hearts of people to bless you. Yeah, God says to, that you give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will God cause men to give unto you. See, God has a way to turn the hearts of men in the direction where they they will give unto you. And therefore, you got to thank God for the blessing. You ought to thank him. You ought to, he, you ought to do what he says in verse number one. A Psalm, the psalmist says in Psalm 95, verse one, oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let me tell you, there is no presence like the presence of God. 
There's no presence like the presence of God. When you're in the presence of God, you're in the presence of holiness. When you're in the presence of God, you ought to brag about being in his presence because you have to humble yourself in his presence. We going around here bragging about being in the presence. We can autograph some athletes, autograph some entertainers, autograph some singers. Let me just share with you. Don't worry about their autographs. Make sure you get God's connection and make sure you're in his presence. And when you're in his presence, be thankful. Be grateful. You ought to be grateful this morning. If you're able to listen to me, if you're able to hear me, that's enough for you to be thankful. That's enough for you to be grateful. He says in the presence of God, you ought to have a thankful heart. You, you, ought to, you ought to know that you don't deserve it. You ought to know that it's because of God's security. You ought to know that it's because of what God is doing for you, that you are blessed. My second point is found in verse number three. My second point is that psalmist tells us to sing unto the Lord because of his superiority. We're going to sing unto the Lord because of God's superiority. Look at verse number three. He says, for the Lord is the great God and the great king above all gods. He's superior. You ought to sing unto the Lord. You ought to bless him because of his superiority. The psalmist didn't say that you ought to bless him because you got all your bills paid. The psalmist didn't say that you ought to bless him and praise him because you don't have to worry about situation. The psalmist says in verse number three, you ought to bless the Lord. You ought to sing unto the Lord because the Lord has superiority above all other gods. Now here the psalmist. The psalmist points out some things. Number one, he points out the fact that he is the God above all other gods. Look at what he says. Verse number three, for the Lord is the great God. Some translations put it that the Lord is a great God. But this, the New King James Version got it right when they said, for the Lord is the great God. He is the great God. Th that means this, this definite article, the, means that there's none like him. There's no God like our God. He is the supreme God. He doesn't need anybody else to make him God. He wasn't voted God. He just is God. He always will be God. He wasn't legislated to be God. He's just God. God. He has superiority over all other gods. So one thing that the psalmist points out is that he is the great God. This word great means he's mighty. This word great means that there's no comparison to him. There's no God like our God. There is no God. See, God with a capital G. There are other gods that exist that are gods with a, a small G. And let me tell you, none of those gods compare to our God. He's a great God. He says we ought to sing unto the Lord. We ought to rejoice unto the Lord. He's the rock of our salvation. He is the one that we ought to give thanks to in the midst of his presence. Let me tell you, you ought to hasten to the presence of the Lord. Because the Lord, the Lord is the great God. He is the great God above all gods. So the psalmist points out that there is one true and living God. The psalmist also points out that there are other gods and we, we worship those gods. We, we give our attention to those gods. The psalmist is saying to us today that we need to make sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that our allegiance, our attention and our agreement goes to the one true and living God. And some people have their own gods as the, has them has the, some people have themselves as their own God. Oh, they think they're God. I mean, they'll tell you that nobody did this but me. God had nothing to do with it. I, I remember when I first came to Houston, Texas, I, I was hired on as an electromechanical technician. And that means that I dealt with electronics and mechanics. And then I, as I was an electromechanical technician, my first year, I blew up. And this is 1985, the first year of my first job in the city of Houston, I blew up for Lynn Reed. Resources. I worked for Lynn Resources. I blew up three million dollars worth of equipment. I had my degree. I had enough knowledge to just to make make a mess of myself. I blew up three million dollars worth of equipment. 
my homeboy from Cleveland, Mississippi, back home, Cleveland, Cleveland High School, Cleveland uh, High School, uh, East Side was a, was an arch rival of Gentry High School. So now he's my boss. And now he says before five o'clock, you better have it fixed. I, I worked hard to get it done. I, I put the board here and the board here. I put a resistor there and, and I also put a transistor there and I made sure I saw it tight. I pushed the board in and that board ran for two seconds and poof, something blew out in other places. It's almost four o'clock now. I'm still working on it and, and I fix another board and I push that board in. Poof, it blows out a second time. Now, I have blown up this three million dollar worth of equipment three times in one day. And he's standing over me. Curtis Bass says to me, he said, you better get it done before five o'clock. He had all confidence in me. He, he thought that I could do it. I believed I was I could do it. I took a moment. I bowed down behind the cabinet and I said, Lord, I need you. I need you to show me where to put the resistor. I need you to show me where to put the capacitor. I need you to show me where to put the transistor. I need you to show me where to put the diode. And I need you to show me how to make this board work. And I took an eraser and I erased the edges of the board. I put it in and it came up right before five o'clock. Curtis Bass was happy. I was sure happy. Lynn Resources were happy. Let me tell you, we all was happy that day. And right as I walked from behind the cabinet, I said, Lord, I thank you. My boss said to me, the Lord had nothing to do with it. You did it all on your own. And he began to pat me on my back. But I said, oh, no, if it had not been for God. If it had not been for God, I would have blown it up a fourth and a fifth time. If it had not been for God, I don't know where I would have been. If, I, if it had not been for God, you were going to find me at the end of the day. And therefore, I give praises unto God. I thank God, even in the midst of electronics, even in the midst of mechanics, I thank him for who he is. Because it's God that gives us the knowledge. He is the superior God. He is superior over all. He, his, poor, his presence is important. We got to make ourselves way, make our ways uh, up to the God that we serve. We have to put ourselves in his presence on a regular basis. We got to make sure that we get into the presence of God. Don't wait till crisis hit to get in his presence. You need to be in his presence every day of the week. Every hour of the day, you need God. The writer says, the, psalm, the songwriter says it like this, Lord, I need you. I need you every day. I need you every week. I need you every month. I need you every second of the day. Lord, I need you. Don't leave me, Lord. I need you. In the midst of your troubles, God has been watching over you because he is the superior God. We, we always have to know that we work and we operate in the midst of God's priorities and his superiorities, and in his presence. There is no God like our God. So his presence, the presence of God is important, and we have to stay in God's presence. The psalmist acknowledges all the other gods, but he does not give any of those gods credit. <laughs> Stop giving man-made gods credit for what God has already done. I want to tell you today, the God we serve is superior and he's supreme above all other gods. My final point, and I'll leave you alone today. My first point was that he has security. The, this, the psalmist says that we ought to sing to the Lord because of his security. Then he says we ought to sing unto the Lord because of his superiority. And the third point today, and I'll leave you alone. We ought to sing unto the Lord because of his sovereignty. Yeah, look at, look at verse number, verses number four and five. It says, in his hands are the deep places of the earth. In, in his hands are the depths of the earth. In, in his hand. Then it says that not only are the, are the depths of the earth in his hand, the deep places of the earth in his hand, but the heights of the hills are in his hands, or his belong to him also. And he says, he says, finally, the sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry ground. Look at God. This God is a sovereign God. He's a God who does what he wants to do when he wants to do it any way he wants to do it. Let me just tell you the reason why I know God is sovereign because he made everything and everybody. 
The God we serve is sovereign. He is a God that walks in sovereignty. And because of his sovereignty, we understand that he made everything and everybody. The psalmist, Psalm number eight, asked the question, God, what, who is man? What is man that you are mindful of him, that you have placed him a little lower than an angel? God, you have made us who we are. Oh, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. We serve an excellent God. He just happened to be the sovereign God. He's the God that never sleeps nor slumbers. He is the sovereign God. He walks with us and he keeps us regardless of what we're going through. He is the sovereign God. Look at the, the psalmist says that he walks with us. He knows us. He keeps us. Verse number four, in his hands are the deep places. Some virgins say are the depths of the earth. First of all, we, we must understand that the earth is the Lord. Psalm 24 says, verse number one, uh, Psalm 24 says, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. Everything that was made was made by him because he's the sovereign God. The earth is the Lord. So we understand that the earth is the Lord and the psalmist comes right back after that. And the psalmist says in his hands are the depth, the deep places, the depths of the earth. Not only is the earth the Lord, but every valley, <laughs> every valley is in the hand of the Lord. Look at look at what it says. He says in the hand of God, in his hands are the deep places of the earth. Every valley. You know, the good thing about standing on a hill is that there's another hill that following. But the bad thing about going from a hill to the hill, you got to go down through a valley to get to the next hill. Let me just share with you. When you're going up the hill, riding a bike, it's tough going up the hill. But when you get at the top of the hill, you feel real good about being on the top. And when you go down into the valley, you go down fast and you go down quickly. I just stopped by to tell you today that when you're standing on the hill, just be reminded that there's a valley after every hill. And when you're going through a valley, sometimes you go through the valley so fast it put a swimming in your head. <laughs> Let me tell you, when you're in the valley, you better sing unto the Lord. When you're in the valley, you ought to sing unto the Lord because the Lord offers security in the valley. You ought to sing unto the Lord because the God we serve, this God, he shows his superiority in the valley. And this God we serve, he shows even in the valley, he shows his sovereignty in the valley. He says he's there in good places. He's there in dry places. He's there in deep places. This valley, this low place, somebody may be at a low place this morning. <laughs> Let me tell you, if you're at a low place, you better sing unto the Lord. If you're at a place you don't want to be, you better sing unto the Lord. Sing unto the Lord. Raise your voices unto him. Sing unto him a new song and sing unto him with thanksgiving. He says we have to understand that God's sovereignty is with us even in the deep places of the earth. Then, then look at what he says in verse, verse number four. At the final part of verse number four, he says to us that the heights of the hills are his also. It warns us. The psalmist warns us today. He warns us if you're sitting on top of the hill, don't get beside yourself. If you're sitting on the midst of the hill, if you're sitting on a mountaintop right now, don't get beside yourself. All of your accomplishments, all of your dreams that have come true, don't give yourself credit. You better give it to God because the God we serve is walking in sovereignty. Uh, what, what I'm trying to tell you this morning now, whatever you do, walk with the Lord. Whatever you do, bless the Lord. Whatever you do, sing unto the Lord because on the hill, there are blessings. On the hill, you can look all around, but don't get tempted while you're on the hill to celebrate too long. Don't celebrate too long because while you're on the hill, you got to know that a valley is in front of you. You got to know that a valley is beside you. You got to know that a valley is behind you. In order for you to get to the next hill, you need to understand that you got to go through the valley. You know, life falls on us. Life, life t gives us twists and turns, but we can't quit. The, we have to understand when things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road we're talking seems all uphill, when the fawns are low and the debts are high, when you want to smile, but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must. But don't you quit when you're on top of the hill, when you're on top of the world. Some people woke up this morning on top of the world, but others woke up this morning. 
that wish they never had gone to sleep because what has happened to them is that it seemed like the world is on top of them. If, the world, if it seems like the world is on top of you, let me just share with you today, what you need to do is sing unto the Lord. Sing unto him because he offers security. Sing unto him because he offers superiority. Sing unto the Lord because he offers sovereignty. Okay, he says, he says in verse number four, he says, the valley, the, the deep places of the earth is in the hands of the Lord. Let me just show, share, you, share with you this morning that even when you're in your valley, it's in God's hand. Let me tell you, New Beginning Church, we're in the valley right now, but it's in God's hand. After we've prayed and we've done what we can do, after we have prayed and we perform and we prayed and we perform and we prayed and we perform, it's in God's hands now. And since it's in God's hand, let it stay in his hand because God has control of what's in his hand. In, 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 in verse number four, he says, the heights of the hills are his also. The mountaintop don't belong to us. It belongs to God. He says, whatever you do, recognize God when you're on the hill. Sing unto the Lord when you're on the hill. Sing unto the Lord when you're at your highest point in your life, because you're going to need God at your lowest state in your life. Whatever you do, understand that God is a sovereign God. He closes this little message up, verse number five. He says, the sea is his, for he made it. In his hands form the dry ground. Not only did God make the hill, God owns the cattle on the thousand hills. Not only is God controls is in the valley. He is in the valley. He's controlling things in the valley. But let me tell you, the sea is his. Not only is the sea his, he made it. Let me just share with you this morning. The psalmist said in Psalm 95 that the sea belongs to God. This sea means the watery places. Wherever there's water, God put it there. You know, we run and we get bottled water and, and some of us go and, and we want Ozaka. We don't want a, want a Fina. We want, we want a pure water. We want stream water. One day I traced the water line. I looked at the water line and I traced it from the front to the back. And as I, chased, I traced the water line, I made a terrible discovery. Number one, the water line is coming from a faucet behind the panel. Same little water faucet, the same little water spigot that we got at our house. The water line is coming through there and then the water line moves through some filters and then it moves through some charcoal filters. Then it moves through some hairline filters. Then it moves to another filter and it comes out and they claim that it is pure water. I want to tell you, man cannot make water the way God has made water. What man make is a byproduct of what God has already placed there. The text declares the sea is his. The water replaces belong to God. And then he declares that the dry land is his because he has made it. The sovereign God that we serve has put everything on planet earth that we need. And because he's put everything on planet earth that we need, we're just using what God has already supplied. A lot of people are getting credit for a lot of inventions, but God is the one that made it. A lot of people are getting credit for a lot of discoveries, but God is the one that made it. God is the one that keeps us. God is the one that blesses us. Everything on planet earth was placed here by God. He says, not only are the water replaces his, but the dry land belongs to him. Everything belongs to God. So I say to you today, my dears, whatever you do, recognize that you ought to sing unto the Lord. You ought to sing unto the Lord, meaning you ought to cry out to him. And there are three reasons the psalmist says you need to cry out to him. The first thing is because he's our security. The second thing is because he's, he has superiority. And the third thing is that he is, he has sovereignty. 
He is the sovereign God. And it says that he formed these things. And this word formed means he shaped them. He fashioned them. He put them together. And man can't even make their own children. How you think that man going to make these things? Only God can make these things. God is the one who makes us and keep us. I want to drive you back up to verse number one, where it says that he is the rock of our salvation. Who is that rock? His name is Jesus. Who is Jesus? He's, he's God's only begotten son. Jesus, Mary's oldest child. Jesus, who died on a skull hill called Calvary. And not only does he rescue us from crisis, he rescued us from ourselves. Jesus the Christ took a tree one day. He became our security. He became the sovereign one on our behalf. He became the superior one just for us. Jesus the Christ took a tree. He marched up Calvary's hill. He died that day over 2,000 years ago. He died on the tree. They buried him. But out of that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus that got up from the dead, that rose early that thing, third day morning, is making intercessions for us. He's pleading our case. Every time we confess our sins, he pleads our case. He has done it for us, and he will keep doing for us. Therefore, let us worship God. <laughs> let us give him praises. Let us honor him. Let us bless him. Let us support him and let us go with him. And most of all, let us trust him. Jesus the Christ, we trust him to make intercessions for us. He, he saved us. He has made us. The Bible says that when everything was made, Jesus was right there. He made it along with God, along with the Holy Spirit. And that same Jesus is coming back to rescue us one more time from this dirty world, from this messed up situation. One of these days, he will crack the sky and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up with him in midair. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, it says that we ought to comfort one another with these words. The words are that he will come back and rapture us away if we're born again, if we're saved. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to know Jesus. Try him. Allow him to bless you. And you bless him. You can become a part of the church universally by just giving your life to Jesus Christ. By trusting this story that we talk about. Trust in this story we read about. Trust in this story we sing about. That over 2,000 years ago, on a skull hill called Calvary, a hill shaped like a man's skull, over 2,000 years ago, he died for you, and he died for me. They took him off the cross, laid him in a borrowed tomb. It's a simple story with a great ending. They laid him in a borrowed tomb, but early that third day morning, he rose with all power from the dead. Would you like to be saved today? Would you like to meet Jesus today? Would you like to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that when you die, you're going to heaven? If you're not sure where you will go when you die, I recommend Jesus, Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. If you want to receive him today and die, when you die and go to heaven, you, you, you can only die through him and go to heaven through him. You can only live through him, but you got to believe the story. If this is you and you want to go to heaven, will you bow your head with me and repeat after me and invite Jesus Christ into your life to be your savior? Just say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. 
We believe that you're born again if you've trusted Jesus as your savior. We believe that if you die or when you die, you're gonna to go to heaven. We believe that Jesus the Christ, if you're still living at his return, you will be raptured. He will rapture you up. And the Bible says we will forever be with the Lord. He says to comfort one another with these words. I'd like to pray for those of us who struggle with sin, those who fall short and get back up. Because when you fall short, you ought to get back up. I wanna pray a prayer of repentance, a prayer of rededication, that God will bless us. Father God, we come now thanking you for the privilege of prayer. We come confessing our sins. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. Bless our lives. Bless us to walk with you. Lord, forgive us for not doing the things that are pleasing in your sight. Bless us, Lord, to always depend on you and, and trust you. Bless us to sing praises unto you. But somebody has fallen off. I ask you to give them the encouragement to get back up. Bless them, Father God, and bless us to walk with you, to trust you, to be our leader and our guide. Lord, we thank you for saving our souls. We thank you, Father God, for making us whole. We thank you for allowing us to recommit to you, the righteous God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. When we thank God for who he is and what he's already done, we praise God for his word. We praise God for being the God of security, the God of of superiority and the God of sovereignty. And that's the God we ought to sing unto. We ought to praise God for who he is and what he's already, already done. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. This is a moment that we can all participate in. And I'm asking you to give to the Lord through tithes and offering as well as sacrificial gifts. Let us pray. Father God, we come to this moment of giving unto you. We pray that you bless every giver. Bless us, Father God, that we will walk with you. Bless us to trust you with our money. Bless every person, Father God, that will give. Bless every person to be encouraged to give. And bless everybody to be giving in a cheerful way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. It's now offering time. It's time to give tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. You can give by two means. Number one, you can give by mailing your gift to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. As you consider your gifts, first of all, give your tithes and your offering. And what I'm asking, because of our construction in progress, Brother Whitlock said it well, uh, thieves have come and they've taken, and that's why we are at our remote locations in Sunday school and Bible study, as well as church worship. Well, I ask you to do every adult over and above your tithes and offering to give $250 to our building fund, $250 to our building fund. We usually don't ask for a numeric number but I believe if we give every adult, whether you are a visitor or a member, I'm asking you to give $250 over and above your tithes and offering to our building fund that we can get back up and get rolling very soon. Make sure that I swatch all, squash all the rumors. Yeah, we did have insurance, but we haven't received the check yet. <laughs> it's coming, it's coming. And therefore, we want to make sure that we do our part. 
Our ministry partners have done their part. Our ministry partners have given graciously to us. We well, thank God for every pastor, every church, every ministry, every individual, every company, every corporation that has given. I want to say thank you. We appreciate your gifts. Now it's our time as a church family, our time as friends of the New Beginning Church, our time as family members of the New Beginning Church to give toward this building opportunity. And I'm asking every young person, every youth to give $50. And yes, you can give it over a period of time. Yes, you can do it in installments. But I'm asking you to contribute to the New Beginning Church as we've contributed to so many others that ministry will continue to go forth and that ministry will be out front and that ministry can be financed. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Let us go to God in prayer for our gifts. Father God, we thank you for every gift. Thank you for every giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion, until we meet again, let us say together, amen. We're praying for Brother Clarence Robbins. We're lifting him before, before the Lord in prayer. We're praying for you. You pray for me, and I'm going to be praying for you. And we'll walk down this road together and let God have favor upon each of us. God bless you, and God keep you. It's our prayer.